my name is Mr Johnson and this is my lesson on what you need for this. So prior learning, what you should need or what you should know from key stage three, what you studied in the past. You should recall that living organisms are made of cells. You should be able to recall and describe how to prepare specimen slides. And you should recall and describe how to use a microscope to obtain a high clarity image. Now bear in mind that this is taught at Key Stage 3, but possibly not as much detail as it is now. Just having a good idea of this is helping. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to describe how to prepare a microscope slide and any common mistakes to watch out for. You should also be able to explain how to use a light microscope to get the best image from a slide. And finally, and this is the one that tends to be the calculation or the maths based questions of the biology unit, calculate the magnification of a slide calculate sample sizes from measurements under a microscope. So let's take a look at our first objective. First off, you need to be able to label microscopes and slides. You have to be able to do both. So what we've got here is a picture of what you probably find in most labs, a, 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 what should we say, standard microscope setup. And some of the things that we've got on there are the body tube, which is the thing that connects the eyepiece lens to the actual microscope assembler. The nose piece, which is where the uh, objective lenses are all stored. The low power lens, the medium power lens, and the high power lens. You find that you can twist these so that you can switch between a low power, medium power, and high power lens. Usually they're given as the size of the magnification. So for example, the one that I use in my lab has a four times low power magnification, 10 times medium power magnification, and a 40 times high power magnification. The stage clips are literally just thin strips of steel that can hold the microscope slide in place on the stage. The diaphragm, this is that little circle underneath the stage. You can't see it from this picture, but it actually has lots of different sized holes in it and it spins. So you can actually control the amount of light coming through the hole in the stage and into the objective lens. The light source, which illuminates the specimen on the stage for you the eyepiece that you look down, the arm which connects the lenses to the rest of the microscope and also allows you to carry it. You should always carry a microscope by the arm and never anywhere else. The stage which is movable, it can move up and down to bring your slide into view. The course adjustment knob, this moves the slide quite quickly and is quite a coarse way of focusing the slide's image. Then you've got a fine adjustment knob. Sometimes it's on the side, sometimes it's actually a small protrudence on the course adjustment knob. But this one allows you to move the stage much more carefully, much more slowly. So you can, if you're just on the cusp of seeing something clearly, you can just move that little bit. And finally, the base. This is that holds the microscope stand uh, down and keeps it in securely in place while you're looking down the slide. Then there's the slides themselves. This is one that I took a photograph of in the lab. And what you can see here is the slide itself, the glass slide. The specimen would be placed in the center of the glass slide. And to that specimen, you would add a stain, a dye, or even just water. If it's a transparent specimen, for example, if I was peeling this top layer of onion skin cells off to uh, look at the onion cells, I might add a stain. If it's not transparent, if it's not see-through, then you might just use water to hold it in place. Finally, there's a cover slip, which is a thin piece of glass that goes over the top of your specimen to hold it in place and to prevent it from drying out. So how to prepare a slide itself. A slide is then just a thin piece of glass used to hold objects which are examined under the microscope. If you have to make your own slides, then the steps to do so are slightly different depending on whether you use plant or animal cells, but you can break them down pretty much into four steps. So the first step is peel a thin transparent layer of epidermal cells from the inside of an onion if we're using plant cells. Place the cells on a microscope slide, taking care to spread the cells out. So uh, I don't know if you've prepared one yourself, but microscope, uh, sorry, onion cells can be quite it's almost like sellotape in the tents that they, they kind of bunch up. So when you place them, you just gently peel them so they flatten the surface of the slide. 
add a drop of water or in the case of onion cells, iodine, which is a chemical stain, just stain a starch present. Finally, lower a cover slip onto the onion cells using forceps or a mounted needle. Now the cover slip itself needs to go on very, very carefully because if you get any bubbles trapped between the cover slip and the specimen, it will obscure what you can see. So if there is a bubble, what you tend to do is you place one end of the cover slip down on the slide at an angle and then slowly lower it down whilst just gently pressing on the bit that's lowered down to the slide. This should force any bubbles out away from your specimen. If it's an animal cell slide you're preparing, you can remove cheek cells from the inside of your cheek using a cotton swab, for example. Smear the cotton swab onto a microscope slide. And then you add a different stain for animal cells, for cheek cells particularly, we use methylene blue, which is again a chemical stain. Then we lower the cover slip again onto the cheek cells, same way as before for the plant, you use a forceps or a mounted needle and you do it gently whilst ensuring that you push any bubbles out through the side. And to show you what I mean by this, this is what I meant, you place one side of the cover slip down, you lower the other side down, and as you're lowering it, you just make sure all the bubbles push towards the side where the mounted needle is. So some things to watch out for. These are things that can go wrong. One, bubbles trapped in the slide, we've already mentioned. If it's between the specimen and the cover slip, you can still see the specimen most of the time under a microscope, but de details that you want to make clear are gonna be obscured by the bubble. You won't be able to see them as easily and also make it difficult to take measurements. So you should always take care to place this slowly and push bubbles out. If you put a slide under a microscope and there are bubbles there, you're just going to have to re repeat the, bit of the process of making the slide. Well, some hazards to watch for. Cover slips and slides are made of thin glass. They are brittle and they can splinter or break easily. Some chemical stains are toxic. So these are things to watch for in terms of hazard management. That then describes how to prepare a microscope slide, common mistakes to watch out for. Next thing, explain how to use a microscope to get the best image from the slide. So, what do the different parts of the microscopes do? Now, pretty much included a description of most of the important parts of the microscope here, but eyepiece lens. This is part of the microscope which you look through at the specimen itself. The objective lens three or sometimes even four lenses with a range of different magnifications and we tend to start on the lowest power one and work our way through. The stage is the flat platform that holds the slide for observation. A lamp is providing light to illuminate the specimen. Sometimes on a much older microscope you might not have a lamp, you might have a mirror which you use to angle daylight or sunlight from a strong light source up and through the stage. The slide there on the present, on the, sorry, on the stage is a thin piece of glass that holds a specimen in place. The focus wheel used to bring the object in and out of focus. On this one, you can see the course wheel and on this side of the course wheel is the, uh, the fine focusing wheel. The arm, this is the part of the microscope that you can use for carrying. You should never try and pick up a microscope by the eyepiece lens or uh, by the objective lenses. Lots of people do this as a mistake in the lab when they're first using them. The eyepiece lens is removable. So if you pick it up by the eyepiece lens or the barrel of the eyepiece lens, what tends to happen is it falls out and the microscope falls on the floor, which means it's an expensive broken mess or you hurt yourself if it lands on your foot. And then the base, which supports it. So how to use it then? Now we know what those parts are and what they do, how do we use it? First thing you do, rotate your objective lens. So without putting anything on the microscope, rotate the lens so the lowest magnification lens is lined up with the hole in the stage. Then turn on your light source and make sure the light is coming through. Then you turn the course focus, again before you even put the slide on, to make the stage as far away as possible from the objective lens that you're using. Then you place the slide on the stage Line it up so the specimen's in the center where the light passes through. Then step four, turn the course focus wheel to bring the slide into focus. Step five, you should always be able to draw a pencil diagram of what you can see on the slide. You, pencil diagrams are dead easy to do. You just literally draw the structures that you can see. So if you see in little circles or little hexagonal boxes in the case of onion cells, 
then draw what you can see as simply as clearly as you can label any areas of interest and if you know which structure you're drawing then it's a good idea good practice to label them too once you've done that drawing rotate the objective lens to the next highest power lens and you should find that your image is slightly blurry but then you use your fine focus to bring the slide back into a clear focus with a higher magnification if you go too far for example at this stage you use the coarse focus rather than the fine focus and you can't get that clear image then the easiest thing to do is to go back to the lowest power lens and start again focus it then move to the next highest power lens and bring it into focus there plenty of time so it's a good practice some common problems then with the imaging process sometimes and these are actually taken from questions that can be asked in the exam pupil a is using a microscope and can't see any light through the eyepiece lens describe two steps that she should take to check that the microscope is working correctly first thing might be that they've forgotten to turn on the light source or in the case of a microscope with a mirror the mirror is not angled so that the light is entering through the stage second thing to do is to check the diaphragm the underneath that stage remember before we talked about that small circular piece of plastic with lots of holes in if the holes aren't lined up with the hole in the stage then it will block light meaning that no light can come through and you won't be able to see your specimen so you need to check the diaphragm is lined up to let light through the hole in the stage final one and this is a dead obvious one but most people tend to ignore it check all the lens caps have been removed if your microscope comes with lens caps and you've not taken them off it's like trying to take a photograph with your finger over the lens it just won't work image is not visible sometimes you've checked all the things you've got your slide on everything seems to be working but you can't see anything it might be that the slide is on the stage but the specimen is slightly moved over to the right or the left and not over the hole in the stage which means it's not under the lens directly if that's the case it's just a case of adjusting your slide so you can see more clearly final problem image is blurry the details are not clear so in this case first thing to do remove the slide from the stage check there are no bubbles between the cover slip and the specimen itself second thing to do check that you've used a stain for transparent or clear samples uh, for example iodine in the case of onion cells or methylene blue for the cheek cells and then the third thing i apologize about the three and four check that you've started focusing from the lowest power objective lens if you try it from the highest magnification you will actually find it very difficult to make out clear images you always start on the lowest and work your way through until you get the image as clear as you can get that's explain how to use a microscope to get the best image from the slide. And the final thing then, calculate the magnification of a slide and calculate sample sizes for measurements under a microscope. So magnification then. Magnification is how many times bigger the image is than the object being viewed. So if I'm talking about magnifying glass, it makes an image underneath the glass seem bigger, magnification. There are two different ways to calculate the magnification of a sample under a microscope. The first method, if you know the power of both lenses used by a microscope, that's the power of the objective lens and the power of the eyepiece lens, then the actual formula for calculating it is dead simple. The total magnification is equal to the magnification of the eyepiece multiplied by the objective magnification. To put that into context, let's have an example. A student views a cell through a microscope. The objective lens is 40 times and the eyepiece lens is 10 times magnification. What was the total magnification of the cell? Now, because I've got the power of the objective lens 40 times and the power of the eyepiece lens 10 times, I've highlighted them both in a different color. Now, I'm going to use the formula, the total magnification is eyepiece times objective. I'm going to place the numbers in the correct place. This is a really important trick to use for GCSE, whether you're doing biology, chemistry or physics, because if you set out the equation and set the numbers underneath, even if you then make a mistake in your final calculation, say, for example, you press the numbers wrong on a calculator, the examiner can follow your line of reasoning and can mark everything correct up to the point where you made a mistake. Whereas if you just literally write the answer with nothing, no prior working in between, you lose all marks available. So you can see I've got my eyepiece as 10, my objective as 40, 10 times 40. We all know we can do this in our head, and if we can't, we can still use the calculator 400 times total magnification. 
that's our first way of doing it. But then sometimes we might get a different type of question. So how about if they tell us the original cell measures 0.001 millimeter in length? What is the length of the magnified cell? Well, from the previous question, we were given a total magnification or we calculated the total magnification of 400 times. At this point, that means that the image appears 400 times bigger than the original cell. So to find the length of the magnified cell, I take the image, sorry, the object's length, 0.001, multiply it by the 400 times, and it'll give me the magnified length, 0.4 millimetres. So that's the first method, working it out using the known values for the objective and the IP size. But what about if we don't know the power of the lens? What if the question isn't obvious in terms of what the power of the lens is? Well, in that case, we need to be given some more information. So for the second method, if you don't know the power of the lens is used by a microscope, then we should be given an image size and a real size in the, in the question about the magnification. This means that we can use the equation magnification equals image size divided by the real size. But for this equation to be used, both the image and the real size measurement should have the same units. So they should both be measured in millimeters or micrometers or nano or picometers. But if they're not, then you will have to convert them first. If you don't, you will get the wrong magnification. So let's take a look at an example. And for the purposes of this, I'm going to keep, as you can see, the units of the image and the real size the same. So a student views the cell through a microscope. The real length is 21.5 micrometers. That's the Greek letter mu next to the five. And the image length is 9,800 micrometers. What was the total magnification of the cell? Well, the total magnification is the image divided by the real size. And again, I've highlighted it in different colours and I've put the equation down and I'm putting the numbers in the placeholders. So image is 9,800 divided by real is 21.5. And stick it in a calculator, you'll get an answer of 455.8. So I've rounded it up to 456 because that's one decimal place. Total magnification. But what if we've got the magnification and we want to know one of the other sizes? So for example, student views a cell through a microscope. The magnification is 500 times and the image length is 8,000 micrometers. Well, at this point, we have to rearrange the equation that we've been given. And I'm not gonna go through the steps here, but in this case, because we've got magnification and image size, to rearrange for the real size, it would be real size equals image size divided by magnification. So the real size of the cell is image size divided by magnification. Again, I've put my equation in. I've put my units and my um, quantities in. So image size is 8,000 micrometers divided by 5,000 times magnification. And that gives me an answer of 16 micrometers. Now, you've got to remember that this equation, again, assumes that the units are the same. So whatever the units were for the image size, you would use as the units for your real size if using this conversion. And that's how to calculate the magnification of a slide and calculate sample sizes from measurements under a microscope. That is the end of today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. And I want to say thank you very much again for watching. Take care, have a good day.